Now we will solve our new stiff string um, equation of motion or wave equation. So we're going to guess a traveling wave solution. How about y of x and t equals a and o sine or cosine? How about, off the top of my head, cosine? Kx minus omega t. And remember, that is in the form uh, x minus vt. Um, let's see. So we're going to plug that in. So let's plug it in, and let's do it from memory. So it was d2y, dt2. So two time derivatives, they're each going to pull out a minus omega, so that's going to become omega squared. Cosine will go to negative cosine. So we're going to have minus a omega squared back to cosine kx minus omega t. All right. And that was equal to t over mu um, times. And then we had our regular d2y dx. Two. So two derivatives there is going to pull out k squared. It's going to make it negative minus a k squared, but back to cosine, kx minus omega t. And then we had minus alpha. Remember, alpha was e i over t when we pulled everything out. Minus alpha, and then d4y dx4. So we're going to take four spatial derivatives. We're going to pull out four k's. It's going to go back to cosine without the minus. Take four derivatives, you'll, you won't have to pull a minus out. So that minus stays. Cosine kx minus omega t. So we made our guess, and we plugged it into the equation of motion. And we said, equation of motion, is this a good guess? And the equation of motion said, this is a good guess. You can put any amplitude you want. The equation of motion does not care about the amplitude. Sorry, I just need to pull that there so that I can cancel it out. Uh, the equation of motion does not care if you use cosine or sine. The equation of motion really just cares that, let's see, that you end up with omega squared equals t over mu times uh, what's left here. Uh, let's see, that minus, and that minus, and that minus will all go away, times k squared plus alpha k to the fourth. So that's what the equation of motion said, is that those have to be equal to each other. So we can say, well, this is the old velocity we used to talk about. So we're going to call that v, and I'm going to put in d. The non-dispersive velocity was the square root of the tension over mu, right? And then alpha's already there. So if we say that's v squared, we have omega squared equals v squared times this thing. But we could pull a k squared out of that, right? So k could come out and it'd be 1 plus alpha k squared. So if you took the square root of this thing, you could get that omega is v is v the non-dispersive velocity that we used to talk about, times the square root, or times k, sorry. Omega is v times k. Times the square root of 1 plus alpha k squared. So we've calculated the relationship between omega and k, and we can plot it kind of like this. And you can see in the good old days of non-dispersive medium that this isn't here, and v, of course, is a constant, and it would be a line. But now we've got a more complicated equation here, and basically what it does is rather than a line, it kind of goes up a little bit, kind of like that. So this is called the dispersion curve. Because it describes the dispersion, it describes this relationship, and what we see here is that higher frequency sinusoids 
move faster. Because it's getting a higher slope as we go. And this is why the delicate balance of Fourier components that we make to make a shape fall apart, because they don't all move at the same speed.